Joe DiMaggio came off the sandlot of San Francisco to blast his way into baseball's Hall of Fame and capture the imagination of all America. Joe DiMaggio joined the Yankees in 1936 and was an instant star, both at bat and in center field, as the Yanks won four straight world championships. In his every physical action, he was the personification of grace. He led the league in batting in 1939 and 1940, and his powerful arm threw out many a runner at the plate from center field. Commissioner Ford Frick and Hall of Fame President Paul Kerr applaud him at an old-timers day. And here's a flashback to Joe the rookie in 1936. Griffith Stadium, Washington, a single by demand. For power, speed, and grace, take a look at this. Maggio comes into the batter's box. Magley gets set. Joe connects with a solid blow and sparks a mighty two-run homer into the upper left field deck. It's his eight-round trip wallop in 10 World Series. Terra scores ahead of Joe, and the Yanks go out ahead four to one. It's their biggest inning in the series so far. After blasting a home run in his first game, he would hit two in the second. In vintage DiMaggio style, his finishing touch was another home run, capping an astonishing return. Joe Swing dealt one high in the upper left field stand for his fourth home run in World Series competition. The Yankees lead two to nothing. Final blow is delivered by Joe DiMaggio, who lifts a long home run ball to the upper tier, and the New York Yankees are once again world champions. The Giants bowed 25 years ago, but a quarter of a century later, in San Francisco uniforms, they were back fighting the Yankees for the crown and giving them a tougher battle. And Jolson Joe DiMaggio has made plenty of baseball history. Back on July 2nd, 1941, for example, his bat smashed Wee Willie Keeler's record of nearly half a century for safe hits in consecutive games. With a line drive into the stands, Joe turned a new page in baseball history. He made it 45, but he didn't stop there. DiMaggio finally came through with safe hits in 56 consecutive games. That's an all-time record set by the Yankee clipper, Joe DiMaggio. 30, amazing, and 40, almost unheard of. But in this magic year, Joe DiMaggio hit safely in 56 consecutive games. It didn't come easy, and our star of the year actually had a tough slump early in 1941. On May 15th, Joe got his stroke back with a single off Chicago's Edgar Smith. From then on, the hits just kept coming. The streak kept building. A record crept closer. Did Joe feel the pressure? On June 29th, Joe belted a double off the Senator's Dutch Leonard. He had now tied George Sisler's American League mark by hitting in 41 games in a row. Joe was 0 for 3 in the second half of that day's twin bill. But here it is. A base hit to left breaks Sisler's mark. DiMaggio then shattered Willie Keeler's major league record of 44 and went on to hit safely in 56 consecutive games before he was stopped. Gone are the days when baseball fans can feast their eyes on the dazzling doings of Joe DiMaggio, one of the game's all-time greats who always went all out in playing his way to the pinnacle of his profession. Joe connects to follow his own advice. He was a magnificent center fielder, a superb base runner, and he knew how to hit the dirt. Joe became a glittering star among stars. DiMaggio gripped his bat at its very end and swung for distance. His 361 Major League home runs justified his nickname, the Yankee Clipper. Joe's big league batting average was 325. He hit safely in 56 consecutive games. 
and three times with the approval of the fans, he was voted the league's most valuable player. Even his failures were colossal. Joe belted one in the 1947 World Series that looked like a surefire home run. But Dodger outfielder Al Gianfrido made one of the most miraculous catches in series history. After Army service, DiMaggio returned to the Yankees, plagued by old injuries. But manager Casey Stengel's faith in the Clipper was to pay off. DiMaggio Day came to the stadium in 1949. Thousands honored the fisherman's son who, despite constant pain, hung on that season and batted an astounding 346. Then in 1951, Joe bowed out of the game. His presence had enriched on and off the field. I said last spring, I thought this would be my last year. I wish I could have had a better year. But even if I had hit 350, this would have been my last year for me anyhow. You all know I've had my share of injuries and setbacks during my career. In recent years, these have been too frequent to laugh off. When baseball is no longer fun, it's no longer a game. And so, I've played my last game of ball. Yankee Stadium won't be the same picture without that glove and the man behind the glove. Joe DiMaggio announces his retirement after 13 seasons with the Yanks. His bosses, Topping and Webb, and his manager, Casey Stengel, will miss the great center fielder, who said recurring injuries made him decide to quit at 37. The grace, power, and style of Joe DiMaggio is unforgettable. His Yankee number five can be worn no more, for it hangs in baseball's Hall of Fame forever.